All right. Good afternoon. I'm not really sure where I am today. I feel like I'm in the Bahamas. I'm going to go with that. So my background is really like a serenity place for me. This is the first time I'm being bold and brave and doing a little different with my background. So I hope you enjoy it. I and like I hope Jan can stay focused on where she is and not <laughs> and be jealous of me being on the beach somewhere. Right I know. Now. I know. Let me zone out. <laughs> I want to thank my chapter president for taking time out of her schedule, which is a retirement, but yet busy schedule still to be with me today on Janine Cares as we celebrate legacy leaders. When I think legacy leadership, uh, Jan definitely comes to mind. Uh, when moving to Frederick, I reached out to, to find out where the Deltas were in Frederick, and she was one of the people that responded quickly and kind of shared information about how to get involved and I know she does a lot with like leadership in terms of recruitment and making sure that anybody that's in Frederick is active or at least invited to be welcomed by our chapter and so Jan I just want to say thank you for welcoming me as I'm transitioning from Montgomery to Frederick County and making me feel at home with FCAC so um, I am excited to have you just just join us by, again, introducing yourself if you'd like and sharing kind of your background, where you're from, your hometown, your, your college you went to, and, and all that that you want to share related to career and kind of your background. And who is Jan Goodman? Okay. All right. Well, um, I'm, I am Jan Goodman. I'm originally from South Carolina. I grew up in a little town uh, called Clover, South Carolina, about this big, uh, one, one street light. <laughs> But um, definitely a close knit, um, you know, community. I, I'm the oldest of three and the only girl. And girl, and um, you know, growing up, I was really shy. But I, I would say probably up, up through maybe middle school, extremely shy. Um, but my mom made an effort to keep me in school, keep keep me engaged in things in school. You know, for for age, I took piano lessons, um, played clarinet acted in high school, you know, it was all about coming into my own, you know, and just finding out uh, who, who Jan was as a, as a young person, but in growing out of that, that, um, I guess just that, that, that nervousness about being, I was really tiny and just very quiet. My mom used to tell me that I would cry at the, at the moon, and I think I did, <laughs> I think you know. I the same way for sure, and I also played the clarinet. See, this is why it's important. <laughs> I can't yeah. imagine you being shy as, 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 as how I see you present right now. But <laughs> that actually shocked a lot of people because I really was. I was very shy and just very intimidated. But, you know, she, she would constantly tell me, you know, to just find myself. And she encouraged me to, to um, find things that, that made me happy and not focus so much on trying to, you know, fit in with other folks, but just doing things that were positive and being around positive people. So I was, I just that involved in 4-H and a lot of youth programs. We had a lot of things to do during the summer. Uh, we didn't have, we didn't call our, our youth program the Boys and Girls Club, but that's kind of like what it was. So we stayed active and things like that. And of course, involved in the church. And then um, when I went to college, I attended Benedict College in Columbia, South Carolina, and I majored in biology with a minor in chemistry. I and went there thinking, yeah, at I so <laughs> I actually thought, you know, I was going to be a lab technician, but at the time they had changed that particular program. So I ended up being just a straight biology major with a minor in chemistry. And um, from there I attended grad school, but it was weird because that wasn't my initial plan. I thought, okay, well, I'll just go to work for a little bit and then I'll go to grad school. But my advisor, um, who was just a phenomenal lady, uh, kept prodding me because I was graduating with honors and she said, you know, just go right away. So I applied to one school um, to the University of South Carolina and was accepted into the public health program. And that's where I got my master of science in public health in uh, with a focus on epidemiology. So that's a little bit about the, you know, the educational side of it. Um, the first in my immediate family to go to school, my mom took classes here and there, but I was the first degree in my family. So from there, um, right. I needed, that's a celebration for sure. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And and you know that um, that was just something that she and my, my my dad, but she and my grandmother in particular, they encouraged you know the the women in our family to pursue education. They knew how important that was. So um, you know I needed work experience after I graduated, and 
ended up in the military. Never thought that I was never part of ROTC. Um, but I, during, let me back up just a little bit. That I pledged, um, was initiated into Delta while an undergraduate at Benedict College, uh, Gamma Upsilon chapter, go Gamma Upsilon. Okay, yeah, she had the record there, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fall 83. And, um, you know, from there, we started grad school, then went to the military. And I basically thought I would just do three years just to get work experience. And I ended up staying on active duty for 25 years. And, wow, um, thank you for your service. Thank, thank you. For your you. Service. <laughs> yeah, so that's, that was, those are just examples of, you know, how my life trekked along, not really um, you know, sticking to what I thought my plan would be, but the 25 years took me all over the world, of course, and I ended up at the time here um, in Frederick in, in 2015. And throughout that time, of course, actively in, involved in continuing my work with the church and, and whatever I could do, because I always make sure I'm connected with the church somewhere. And then um, with the chapter, wherever chapter was located, wherever I was stationed, and um, just making sure to be involved in, in service. That, that's really important. And, and I think one of the key messages of, of just being engaged in the community, learning to be servant, a servant leader. And, and that uh, to me is more of just kind of how I, I operate now. So. Absolutely. I, um, I definitely appreciate you sharing that. Since I'm at the beach right now, what, is, what was your favorite place that you've traveled in your years in the military? Or oh even. my goodness! Um, <laughs> I, know I, would ha I would have to say uh, probably my my most favorite uh, was being stationed in Hawaii. Nice. Um, it was a, a very challenging assignment because I was dual hat, actually triple hat there as far as my leadership role. But um, location wise, that that was a very nice assignment. We had an opportunity to stay there for three years. But then you know you have this mindset about being on an island, <laughs> but after a while, you can only circle it so many times. So it's, it's, uh, it's always good to get back, you know, uh, stay side and to, to be back close to family. But that was probably location wise, my favorite, one of my favorites. Yes, being married to a military spouse, I definitely have heard a lot about Hawaii and mm -hmm. definitely that same kind of a sentiment, like it's, it's big but small, and, but very nice. Yeah, yeah. I had also heard from another soror of mine just how connected the people were, mm -hmm. there, even though, you know, the chapters were different sizes there. Yes. Very connected um, of all the Panhellenic. It really was. It was a great working relationship, and I think that was also because, of, like you said, just being there isolated kind of but at the same time it just helped with engaging the community and i think a lot of it too being military we were transient and no matter what the service every service was represented there so you pretty much had to depend on each other obviously from a military standpoint but then also to do whatever it was that we needed to do in the community and everybody tended to go to the same church and you just knew everybody here so i love that i love that small town field feel um being that i'm from a uh a, a small but big family kind of like we we're not very connected and i i hear stories of people like my friend uh paul fleming who's tina's husband they have family reunions that are like enormous and i'm yeah. like wow so i always like to hear positive stories of people and how they connect and that's what i'm trying to do really with janine cares is make sure that our frederick community grows in strength in terms of connecting others right um, and, and and being able to provide support because me i know that my experiences over my uh, me, my life as a parent and my life as even an administrator, I felt like being connected to groups or organizations or churches um, was where the opportunity for strength in numbers came. And, you know, whether that's numbers or strength in like communication, strength mm -hmm. in opportunity, strength in knowledge. And so, you know, think about our old school, like roots and groups. Uh, it's, it, it's been that, that, power of bonding and communities to strengthen us and so that's right. i'm really looking at janine cares really to service our um, african-american community particularly because our disproportionality continues to remain in our african-american and latino populations and so mm -hmm. i feel like we have to be strategic in our layers of support but at the same time we're inclusive of all 
because oh, yeah, absolutely. Have everybody's help to, 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 to move forward. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so like as you're sitting and existing and living through this uh, Corona virus, what has been something that you continue to think about? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, for me being a, in the public health field, obviously that next wave is a constant, you know, um, what that's going to look like. And it doesn't, it, it's not so much about if, but when, you know, and, and thinking about, um, again, the safety of not just my family, but family and friends. Um, I think about the impact that it does have on our youth learning just a whole, it's just a whole paradigm shift for everyone. And when you hear about the new normal, it really is um, something that just kind of weighs, weighs on you, like, well, what do you do next? When I think about, you know, for example, my parents are still in South Carolina and I, I'm, I'm constantly monitoring what's going on, of course, where they are. I have my brother in Jersey and then, you know, my, my nieces and nephews all over the place and other family members. But then locally, too, you think about um, some of the communities that we've worked with, like our youth and our programs. I reached out to them and I make, t- make sure that I stay in contact yes. with the parents just to say, well, let me know how you're doing, just to check in, you know, to say that I'm thinking about you, even members of the chapter or just someone, just, just a note to say, hey, thinking about you, want to make sure you're okay, because you do have to maintain that communication and, and recognizing that we have to, I think, um, even though this is different, uh, it's, it's really about just using common sense and being smart about how to take care of ourselves. And so it, it's been a time of reflection Um, definitely, you know, you often, um, I think when you have a religious background, you think of a message, you think that there's something. And so for me, spiritually, I recognize that this is a wake up call somehow to, to refocus, to redirect, to reflect, whatever you want that to look like. I hear often in, in the year of 2020, you hear folks talking about, oh, it's the the year of the vision. For me, I think God is like, look, I'm, I need you to see me. This is where, this is the vision right here. And Absolutely. so, you know, um, sometimes we look at things as, as a, a wall or perhaps, um, I don't know, uh, you look at it in a negative way, but it could be, be a moment where God is trying to get us to just slow down just a little bit and redirect some things. So it's, it's a lot. I know I'm saying a lot to get to the point of, I think it's just a lot of things that we really need to just, just take take time to just calm down and really reflect on what exactly is going on. Um, it, 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 you can't go back and worry about, well, what we could have done to prevent it. It's, it's already out of control, but it doesn't mean that it's going to stay that way. We just have to think about the what next and where we are right now. And, and like I said, being smart about the decisions and the actions and the choices that we make and, and, Getting out of self, you still have to think about what you can do to help other people and being observant because sometimes a need may not necessarily come across as an ask. Somebody could have a need that you just see it in their body language or you hear about it or whatever the case is. And those are the times that we need to be more compassionate and considerate of other folks. I I hope that answered your question. That, that's kind of because I'm just like, I'm just in a in a in a in a mode of just really truly reflecting and just trying to listen and hear what God's, God's telling me to do. Absolutely. And I connect and I receive all that you're saying. And for me, I appreciate being connected to like our sorority and our church home and, and, and having those people, which is why, again, it's so important to build that community. Cause I, I worry about people who don't have connections to others, people who are living alone and things mm-hmm. like that. So of all the things that you mentioned, you know, is there anything that you feel is, has been really difficult for you or been the hardest thing? I think probably um, not um, being able to, to go visit my family in South Carolina. Um, my dad is 79, mom is 75. Um, I have, you know, of course, my, my in-laws there from South Carolina as well. And um, just, just really wanting, we stay in touch, of course, every other day or so, if not, you know, daily. It just depends on what's going on. We communicate, and that's a beautiful thing. Um, the technology is wonderful, but 
you know, we, when you come from these little country families and you're used to being close and hugging and touching and visiting, and then there's certain times of year when you go home and they come, those, that part has been difficult. Um, also thinking about Darian in school and worrying about well, the, what next for her, or actually just in general, because we know my husband going back to work and just how that's going to look, because we really just don't know. Um, but it's definitely going to take a lot of, uh, a lot of work. It's not going to be something that you can put a band-aid on. I think we really and truly have to individually think about what we can do to, to move forward and, and beyond, because it's going to take a minute for us to, to come out of this, but um, not that it, it, it's impossible. It, so that, that's, that's really, I, I think about the what next, how do you function in the what next phase? Yeah, I heard you say a, a, a one thing that I definitely want to follow up on and having the benefit of you being in the healthcare field. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned, you know, the next phase and, and, and a lot of us are worried and a little afraid of the uncertainty of, you know, can when they say, okay, restaurants and things are opening up, do we take that step or do we proceed with caution? And yeah. um, how, how much research is coming out that we can trust about, that next phase and what, what kind of precautionary measures. I know the CDC for us, um, I heard recently that they're having a lot of guidelines around like how school can exist. And mm -hmm. even that for me is like a lot to even it process. Is. Like if you go back, here's how you will go back. So mm -hmm. what I, I just, yeah, that's a lot to think about. <laughs> it is. And when you, when you think that um, when people have different mindsets too, if you look at a lot of the activity that's going on, um, you can't make people do what they really just don't want to do, but the domino effect of that is what the issue is. And so you can come up with the guidelines, but being able to uh, implement them and reinforce them are going to be key, both inside and outside of the school. So what people have access to, or, or using the school as an example, you, you, know, you know, who will your workers be there? Will the, will the staff, there's a lot of just emotional things, like you said, that people are afraid of that rightfully so, um, the nature of this virus um, is it, it's, it's, it's just a lot of unknowns. And so right. when you try to prepare, how do you prepare other than right. having good guidance, but then the, the leadership sets the tone. Yes. And so that's going to be very important. But then the trust factor based on how that risk, how the risks are communicated um, is, is going to be key. And, and folks really just have to, I think, you can't live in a bubble, but at the same time, you just have to do the best that you can do with what, what's there. But I think we do need to accept that there are fears, legitimate fears. And if people are afraid, you, you, you can't just dismiss that. You have to acknowledge that, right. okay, I understand you're afraid, but this is how we have to move forward. What do you do to, to comfort that? Because even for us as an organization, um, we obviously have to still follow whatever those health rules are. And my first thing is, well, safety first. Mm -hmm. And we can figure out other ways to make things happen. And so how do you build on that? You gotta, we're going to have to really think and dig deep across the board with everything that we do going forward, whether it's the school systems, our organizations, our churches, everybody's impacted. And this is just teaching us how to be more effective and efficient in a different way. All right. So, yeah, I agree. So thank you for that. Um, you've already began to share kind of how you are remaining positive and optimistic during this time. Um, is there anything in particular that you're doing with family or with friends that's really uh, grounding you and, and it's in your control and you're choosing to make a decision to show up and do these types of things so that you stay in a positive mind? Um, I'm back to doing my, my daily Bible study. I got away from that for a while. Um, working out more. Um, actually, Horace and I are working out every day, and uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. I've been joining, of course, the stores with our um, our Zoom workouts. Oh, and, the stroll um, practice the other day was phenomenal. <laughs> it's, it's always something. I was like, my stores are amazing. That's and it. Just the coordination that continues to That's right. Premier, it, we don't just show up. We have an organized plan and and carried out with slideshows and all that. It's just amazing. That's it. And it's it's just you know you, just, it, 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 you, you, you don't know what you can pull out of that box, you know. Yes. But yeah. yeah, just and it really just enjoying time watching watching TV. Even though I've been retired for for five years, 
when I can come and go, you know, without restrictions, I'm moving and doing stuff all the time and I'm still doing that. But this, this forces me to just kind of just chill out for a little bit. Um, I've gotten into some series, some TV, TV series with Darian and just- Oh, absolutely. And even though, you know- she interesting that, with our youth, <laughs> the things that they're watching. Uh. That's it. <laughs> That's it. But just having her home, I mean, she's, she's of course, a college student and doing her thing, but it's good to still have her home and at least know that she's okay. Um, that is just, you know, that's, that's, that's good, too, and it just feels good just to have the family together. We all are kind of, like, in our own spaces, but, you know, still here. And so being able to, to actually communicate, you, you know, you said other things, still, like I said, staying in touch with my mom and dad. It's funny to see them Zoom and actually trying to use Messenger or whatever it is that they they have, <laughs> trying to get connected. But um, I can imagine. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's funny. Mom, for the first time was pretty funny, too, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he, I was like, okay, you got to mute, Mom. <laughs> oh, you have to mute. Stay muted. <laughs> he was hilarious on Cherie's um, prom. <laughs> yeah, the prom. It was like, it was her show, right? <laughs> I can't welcome, hear you. <laughs> welcome to my world. <laughs> Love her to death, but I can hear <laughs> in my mind over and over again, you know. That's it. My brother and I were like, speech number 1005 is coming now. The title <laughs> is. <laughs> but yeah, God bless our elders, you know. We definitely yeah. have to respect them. That's one of the areas of growth that I see to our with our youth. Um, youth, if you're listening, I definitely want you to remember how important not only is it to listen and learn from your elders, but definitely to respect your elders That's absolutely so absolutely. final question and i thank you again for your time i'm going to finish up but the last okay. question is thinking about parents or you as a parent and thinking mm -hmm. about students or you as a, a mom um what are some uh areas of suggestions i don't want to say advice because we're not you know mm -hmm. well we can say advice but mm -hmm. what are some of the strategies suggestions things that you're seeing that you think is working for parents and what's mm -hmm. working for students well, you know what? I think um, overall it's important for parents to still be able to have, um, I think, an outlet because it's been an overwhelming time from what I gather for folks, particularly with, you know, high school and younger age kids yeah. and the homeschooling and, and things are different than what we're used to and what yeah. we grew up with. And, it, and, and I think having that outlet, but then recognizing, too, that there's still things that they can do to keep the youth engaged. Um, um, you know, find activities, find things just outside of the home that you're able to do safely that can keep them connected some kind of way. And, and just, just encourage them, recognizing that, you know, this is different than what you expected. Obviously, it's not what you want. You, you're separated, but it doesn't have to be the end all. Be all. You just have to find a different way to challenge yourself, just like we do. And I think for parents who are worried about um, finding resources. It's important for us as community leaders to pay attention to those things that they may not have access to or may not know about because that's what we're supposed to do. Each one, teach one. And then check in. Yes. Um, make sure that you reach out and, and, and if you don't know, then ask or don't just assume that people know things. That's important for us too because we may have access to things that we know about and you can't sit on it. You've got to be willing to share even if you just put it out there and just say, hey, just just, just cause, whatever that looks like. And if, like I said, when I mentioned earlier, reaching out to uh, the youth and the parents that, that we actually work with, just to let them know, hey, I'm thinking about you, that in and of itself can make a whole difference, a lot of difference. And as you come across things, just say, if you have a question, let me know. Um, I think just being available and making yourself accessible um, is, is key and and then you know for um, whatever that foundation is continue to, to, to lean on that and recognize that um, there are people willing and able to help and just being available and making sure they know that I think that's important for both the parent and the youth thank you so much for your time are there any um, websites you know from your health perspective lens or like from the work that you're doing in the community that you want to share for people who might be looking for um, either support or resources? You know, um, health-wise, of course, I, I monitor both our, um, our local government website, CDC website. Um, just those are the primary resources that I go to for that particular information. 
and for uh, school related things. I, of course, monitor FC, FCPS just to see what they're putting out there. And anything that I can find, of course, our Facebook page for Delta Sigma Theta, I share that particular information as I come across it. Definitely anything related to the census, because that's important as well. Um, just, just whatever I can come across. I, I can't think of anything else in particular, but of course, okay. if I find that's it, great. then I'll thank share you. it. Yeah, that's great. That's thank you. Well, I want to thank you for your time. I appreciate you being here today. Once again, it's Janine from Janine Cares, just trying to help our community stay connected, one community together strong. I really appreciate you for your time. Thank you for thank your you. Um, messages of hope and inspiration. Thank you for your legacy leadership. And if you have any other people that you want to recognize or refer to be on, uh, we are trying to focus on our further community right now for the next month or so. So if you want to send me some names of people that you maybe have interacted with, that might be a resource or a message and that you deem a legacy leader, definitely send them my way. Okay. So have a wonderful day. God bless. Tell the family I said hello and I really okay. appreciate your time. All right. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you for having me. Thank you. All right now.